Hi, my name is Alex Downey-Ying and I want to make a video to briefly go over logos and jerseys for Quidditch teams. So this first slide here, I'm not going to get too complicated, but this rainbow colored area is all the colors that your eyeball can see. The yellow triangle is all the colors that your computer monitor or cell phone can display on the screen. And the black dashed line represents the colors that a printer can produce. So you can see it's not all the same and it's possible to design a jersey or a logo on your computer that a printer will not be able to print out. Something to do if you are designing a logo or jersey is if you, I think if you're in like Photoshop or Illustrator, you can convert to CMYK in the color profiles and just see if the colors will change before you convert it. This can really quickly give you an idea of if the printer is going to be able to print it. But if you've picked a really hot pink color and it looks really great on screen, it's going to be disappointing when your jersey or your merchandise comes and it looks kind of like a, a muddled gray, rose, or orange color. So this is just something to keep in mind when you're picking colors for your team. So the use of logos and images that you don't own. If you are a Quidditch Canada member team, we do let teams use our logo on their jerseys. I'd recommend reaching out just to confirm what you're doing. We do have some standards. For example, you can't change the color if you decide it would look better green, but if you, you reach out, usually if you're a member, you can use it on your, your jersey. Same thing with your school's logo. Don't assume that just because you are a student at that school and your Quidditch team is at that school that you necessarily have permission to use the school's logo or their athletic mascots. Always ask permission, especially you don't want to have to spend money on, on merchandise or jerseys and then be told that you can't use it. So when creating a logo for your team, don't rip off other teams or company logos. Canadian teams have been pretty good about this, but I have seen in other countries, some people seem to just trace and then flip really notable logos. Create your own or don't bother. Logos are an optional part of Quidditch. It's, it's a fun way to brand your team. If you don't know how to do it or you don't want to, you don't have to do it. Don't feel like you have to rip off someone else's logo. Create vector files. So you can do this in Adobe Illustrator. And the reason for this is that if you take the time to actually create a logo for your team, you might want to use it later for something that you hadn't originally intended. So if you're initially creating a logo to go on your social media, if next year or down the line you decide to produce merchandise or a banner, you don't want to have to recreate that logo or have it super pixelated. And a vector file can allow you to scale to different sizes without a, a loss of quality. Save the files in a place where future team players can find and access it. So something I like to recommend is Google accounts are free if you create your your Google email account for correspondence for your team. So made up team, but let's say blueberryquidditch at gmail.com. If you you can use that to have a free drive account and then you can upload your Illustrator file and any PNG files and then that's that's easily accessible to anyone who's a captain of the team in future years. Same with Facebook groups. Oftentimes you can upload files there. My only concern with Facebook is sometimes if you're uploading actual images, they will compress and reduce the quality of the image. So you don't want that to be your, your only option for people to use. So something I want to emphasize again, logos are not necessary to play Quidditch. If you want, you can create logos. You can create really cool jerseys and this looks great on social media, it's great for marketing your team, but it's not necessary. So if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Consider different uses when creating logos. It might look really good, whatever you've designed on your screen, but once you print it or stick it on a sticker or make it really small for a social media icon, details can be lost, you can't read words. So just consider all the different places that it would be used and maybe come up with two versions, a simplified version for for smaller or less detailed options. Do you have a black and white or simplified version? This could be on a press release or if you're printing it in black and white, does it still print in a way that you can understand what you're seeing? And finally, avoid yellow. You're going to want to check the rule book and your league before doing this, but usually yellow is really not allowed because it is uh, it can be confused with the snitch. So we don't want jerseys that are mainly consisting of yellow. Often you can have a little bit of yellow, but it shouldn't be the dominant color. 
jersey numbering. So on the back of jerseys, usually to play competitively, you have to have a very clear number on the back. Each player has to have a unique number, so you can't have two people on the same team that have the number 10 on their jersey. And you want to be a bold, clear font. So don't pick a really decorative font, even if you feel that that really captures the spirit of your team. The, the purpose here is to be clearly read by referees. It's not to convey style of your team. Avoid patterns in low contrast. So if your jersey color is dark, like a dark blue or a dark green, your numbers should be white. It's a good contrast, good definition, so that people can see it from a distance and clearly make out the numbers. Look into the rule book on numbers and symbols that cannot be used. So sometimes there are rules about using letters and symbols. Maybe you have to pick a number within a certain range. You might not just be able to use any number. And consider sponsors. So I've seen some teams will use kind of naughty numbers like 69, 420, 666, and maybe you don't care and it's just something that the player likes. But if this is a year where you're going to really try and get recognition from your school or you're going to try and reach out to sponsors, something like that could be a mark against you and hurt you in trying to partner with other groups. So just consider that before ordering your jerseys. So there's a lot of different options. The first one, most simple, is buy plain t-shirts and use spray paint or fabric paint to put numbers on the back. You can also cut out paper and use that as a stencil for the front. Option two, very similar, have t-shirts printed. So the front has your logo or design printed, but on the back use fabric paint or spray paint to put the numbers on the back. Again, make sure they're clearly red. If you have something like in the image, make sure you put a sheet of cardboard or plastic between when painting or spray painting so that the paint doesn't leak through and stain both sides. Option three, buy a generic jersey from a sporting supply store and iron numbers on the back. So a lot of sporting goods stores and online, you can order these mass produced jerseys. They look pretty clean and uniform, but they can save you a lot of money. This is also a good option if your school has offered to buy the jersey. So some schools will fund jerseys if they can keep them. So the players would not get to keep these jerseys, but going forward, you would have an equipment manager and someone on the team would be responsible for bringing the set of jerseys, hand them out at the game, everyone wears them, looks great, and then at the end of the day, the equipment manager gathers them up again, washes them, and puts them back in storage. Only problem with this, like I said, individual players don't get to keep their own jerseys, which some players might not like that. And another problem is year after year, if you don't have players of the same size consistently, this might not work. So if some players are XXL and other players are small, if you don't have a good range of jerseys on hand, that might not be able to fit them. But this can be an option for if you have people joining later in the season. And at that point, you don't have to order more jerseys for them. You can just pull what you have out of storage. Option four, have jerseys designed and printed custom to your team's branding. You may be able to get matching shorts and they look really great in photos. Players often take pride in their jerseys and being on a team. And sometimes you can do custom things like deciding on the length of the sleeve. It also makes it possible to add sponsorship logos to your jersey to help offset the cost. So you can put on the shoulder or on the chest uh, a logo of someone who's donated money. You can look at soccer teams. A lot of soccer teams do this to see how it's laid out. If you are putting sponsorship logos, please make sure it does not interfere with the numbering on the back of the jersey. A downside to this is it can be more expensive and it can especially be more expensive if you're only ordering one shirt at a time. So let's say you order a full team's set of jerseys, 20 jerseys, you get a, a price because it's a bulk rate. If a couple months later someone's injured and you recruit someone new to the team, it might be a much steeper price for that one person to order one custom jersey as they're not ordering it with the group. So custom jerseys look really great, but they can cost more. So it's up to you and your team to decide what you want to do. Talk to your league, make sure that you understand the rules regarding numbers and colors and what's allowed and what's not allowed. I just wanted to make this quick video because I think some teams stress over these things on coming up with their logo and coming up with fancy jerseys. And these are all optional. They're not necessary to play Quidditch. You don't have to have uh, the most expensive, nicely designed jerseys. Oftentimes, uh, a plain t-shirt, as long as you have legible numbers on the back, it can be enough to play 